what we would now normally do, we, we've closed the evidence, we've heard all of the evidence, uh, and what we would normally do now is invite both parties to make a summary of their case. The, these are the closing submissions. Now, because of constraints of time, uh, we, I, I will ask that uh, both sides limit. We, we've heard their case. Uh, we just need a very brief summary, I think, in no more than a couple of minutes each of what they think uh, we've heard from the witness evidence that might add or change uh, the comments they made at the beginning of the arbitration. So, first of all, Mr. Pitlash. Uh, thank you, sir. I would take it in a slightly different order from my opening. Firstly, on agreement, we say that the evidence is clear. Mr. Trefelius um, was characteristically forthright uh, in what was agreed. Mr. Rondinella, to his credit, conceded a number of key points. Uh, the the um, ambivalence of the position relating to hull fouling under the clause, um, uh, the benefit that he secured by the vessel deviating to Singapore. Um, his evidence was inconsistent to some degree, uh, hesitant and diffident, and, it, and when it got into the red zone, it had to be substantiated by the assistance of Mr. Lauro. Um, I invite you to accept Mr. Uh, Trefilis' uh, evidence on the agreement, and if you accept all of that evidence, then you don't need to consider the other issues, they, because within that is an acknowledgement uh, that the Paranagua problem was one which the charters agreed to waive their claims, for it is their claims, not mine, that we're really dealing with. So, uh, even if you're against me on the final point, uh, I think it is now clear that the time spent going to Singapore was clearly for charters' account. Um, less clear, perhaps, although if you accept that Mr. Trefilis is right, the Singapore expenses are recoverable as well. On off hire, um, I, with all due respect to Mr. Lauro, um, even his considerable talents and uh, eloquence could not even begin to articulate a case on that. Um, I think he had overlooked the fact that there was a ballast voyage. The principles are well stated in the RIN. This is not an off-hire case. This leaves um, the, the two rivers running together, as we described them, the implied indemnity uh, and the breach of Clause 29. Um, on that, you've heard my opening submissions. You are, if I might say, a very eminent uh, panel of commercial arbitrators um, who are familiar with the cash flow issues that are thrown up. Um, the luster of the tribunal is not diminished any way by the addition of Mr. Jago to your number. Um, think about it this way. If you were to, two points I'd make and then I'll close. Firstly, the Kitsa and related cases all concern a period of about 20 days. We're talking about 40 days. Now, Paranagua might have its special problems. But if you look, and you know from your commercial experience, all the clauses have something between 20 to 25 days as the tipping point. Why is that? Because people know that it's clear once you get beyond that point, that is something caused by the charter's orders. Think of it this way. Where do you draw the line? If it's 30, 40, 50 days, you are, to borrow a phrase from another context, allowing the charterer to use the vessel as a floating warehouse. The owner is entitled to his hire. If the charterer chooses to leave the vessel static for, let's say, 60 days, the owner is entitled to obtain his hire. If you allow the charterer for beyond what I call the tipping point to accept, uh, to, to be able to run a um, a breach of warranty case, then the owner will always have that hire, which he earns, diminished by the amount of that claim. Now, within the Coral Seas, as with many of these construction cases, there are appeals to commercial common sense and fairness. It cannot be fair that a charterer can choose not to utilize a vessel and see the amount it's bound to pay us or, or the amount that the owner yields from that choice diminished by a breach of warranty claim. So on the construction point, you have enough to distinguish the Kitsa. You are not bound, and the Coral Seas is unsound in urging parties to look at what should have been said. There is good authority that that is not a helpful approach to textual analysis. 
Those are my submissions, sir. Thank you. Mr. Lauro. Yes. Um, again, um, I think um, you didn't discharge your burden to prove that there was an agreement. This agreement was not even tried to be negotiated. There was no discussion on anything, on, on not even on sharing costs. I thank both the parties for giving, I think, a genuine account uh, of the conversation, perhaps in the mind of Mr. Trifilis, but only in his mind there was an agreement. Um, in fact, also, if an agreement had been, this agreement but obviously I refuse totally because uh, the, the, this is, um, uh, the, the, the burden has not be even been tried to be discharged in this respect. But in the hypothetical case there had been agreement, this would have not been a valid agreement because there wouldn't have been any consideration. The um, uh, maintaining the, the vessel in uh, efficient conditions is a, a, an obligation of uh, the owners. And when you say, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Pitlarch, that uh, this was for the benefit uh, of the charters, I think this is not correct because uh, might have been avoiding problems to the charters, but this was again um, for the benefit of the owners who would have been liable otherwise uh, in case this excessive underperformer, this underperformer would have been maintained for, for, for one year which is the, the minimum last time of the charter party. Uh, I'm very intrigued by your, uh, you are trying I think in some way to make a new law. Uh, you are saying that um, perhaps uh, 26, if my understanding is correct, uh, 26 uh, waiting period in, in the port uh, is acceptable after the Coral Sea decision, which actually covers, except for the number of days, uh, this case perfectly, fits perfectly to this case, and uh, 40 days would be out of a limit. And, you know, I would leave uh, the answer to, to your question or to your proposal to make an, the law in this respect uh, to the tribal. If the tribal believes that uh, we should put a limit uh, to the time that a vessel, uh, which is, as I understand, should be somewhere between 26 and 40 days, uh, I'm sure that uh, we would have to accept this. and. Uh, um, but uh, I suspect this may not be the case in this arbitration. So, uh, again, on the off-fire close, um, I repeat my previous uh, comment. I think the, the, the vessel uh, was uh, in off-fire, but in any way uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the charters are entitled to claim as uh, damages. Uh, all this, um, uh, uh, all this amount. So that's it. <laughs>